Hi, uh, my name is John Metric. Um, I'm a small abattoir operator and, and a butcher in Glossop. Um, and I've come to visit uh, one of my suppliers, my chicken supplier, Robert Whitwam today, um, who's going to tell us a bit about how he actually produces his chicken right from day old through to the finished bird. Uh, and, um, and sadly, we're going to talk about actually why Robert's decided to come out of the, um, the chicken rearing job. So this is Robert Whitwam. Hi. Um, Robert's yeah. been supplying us for ooh, over 20 uh, years or what is 40, it? 40 years. 40 years, flipping it, Robert. 40, is it that long? It was 40 years since I, since I came here full time with, with my dad doing it. Really. Right, right. Hell right, yeah. of a long time. A long time. Yeah. And, and how many small producers, butchers, and that do you actually supply? Probably about 30 odd, I think. I about 30 I don't, odd. I don't really reckon. I, I, I mean, we have lost. We're, well, we've lost like a lot of small shops over the years. Yeah. But then we've farm shops have, have increased. Yeah. And, and, and they're all within the locality then, Robert. Yeah. Uh, you're about our furthest customer, I think. Oh, we're furthest. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Uh, and we're about 40 minutes ride. Yeah, I think you're at 18 miles. 18 miles, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's. Yeah, but that's, most of those businesses are like all within the yeah, local vicinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, of, right. some of our customers, yeah. as nearest one is, what, less than less than half a mile as a crow flies, really. It, that's right. one at farm shops, yeah. And so. how many birds do you produce a year here? Uh, well, we used, to, we used to produce about. Uh, about seventy-five thousand. We're doing. I've cut down a bit now since since one of the lads left. Uh, we're doing around about uh, sixty-five thousand at the moment. Right, okay. So, yeah, so, yeah. so you're under the control of the fish standards. Yeah, yeah. Right? Anything above ten thousand. When we joined the EU, we had to have national rules, of delegation, national delegations, and uh, this was the delegation that we applied for for ten thousand maximum. Anything above that to be under the rules. Uh, and they were told that if we wanted to for them to change that delegation, they would have to go to the European Commission to uh, apply to have it changed. Right. So that's why they couldn't. Right. They said it was too much hassle, really, to do to change it. Do you know how many chicken farmers are of this size? You know, and operating this way in, in the UK. I used to know two, but, but I haven't spoken to either of them in years, and I'm told whether they still. So in. you could be the last one. Then. I could be the last one. I don't. I don't know. That's very sad. Yeah. Can we go and have a look at the chickens yeah. and see uh, yeah. see how we how we get on? Yeah. So Robert, what what have we got here then? Right. Well, we've got some chickens. These are these are six days old. We fetch them from Dalton near Thursk uh, every Thursday morning. In a fetch them in a heated trailer. Obviously, the worst thing you can do with any young livestock is to get it cold. Yeah, it's got two uh, um, diesel-powered heaters. It'll run with just one, but I, I I like to have both on. And then, if there's any issues with one of the heaters, I've still got another heater. To, it's both heated and and insulated, like. And I notice you've got a heater in here as well. Yeah, right? yeah, they've got to be. In all money, around about 95 degrees Fahrenheit under the under the heater. The air temperature in the in the shed is around about 80 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In, in uh, at this age, uh, you try and look after them as well as well as you can. You don't want you know. We give them a lot more space than than, than big plants do. We bed them up every, every day. We put new clean shavings down every day to keep them. Yep. Can't try and keep them dry and keep them clean because. They look really healthy, I mean, they, yeah. they're all scratching about there, yeah. you know, yeah. showing natural behaviour and that. They, uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Look, look I mean, happy, obviously, happy it's, it's quite dark in that shed at the moment because it's mid-March and it's quite cool. I mean, in, in summer months, we take the windows completely out and give as much daylight, as much fresh air as, as possible, but yeah. obviously... It's really to keep the warmth in, you it's, 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 Yeah, it's to keep the warmth in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not let them get cold. No. <laughs> Shut them up and uh, let's go and have a look at some more. Yeah. Right, Robert, um, we're on to the final stage now with these chickens. So, yeah, um, this is five and that, nearly six weeks after the, you saw that first batch. This is what they'll be like, what we call slaughter age. Yeah, I noticed they've got quite a deep litter there, haven't they? Robert? Yeah, we're trying to keep it like what we call friable so that they can sort of dig in it. A bird cleans itself by dust bathing. So you're trying to look after the natural behaviour. I noticed you've got yeah. daylight and that in there as well. Obviously we're marching in, so there's a few. Yeah, well, there's say, plenty of room for the birds, isn't there? They can yeah. move around, can't they? Yeah, yeah. We try to encourage movement, really, and try to keep it bright enough so that they do, they do move. In summer months, there won't be any windows in, in at all. Yeah. Just girls over, over to stop any wild birds intermingling with, with I think hours. the thing I've noticed about how good strong legs they've got as well, haven't they? Not to yeah, oh yeah, they yeah, really. yeah. We don't normally have any leg problems. And, and these birds, you know, 
what, what's the kind of distance that we're talking about that these birds have to travel to slaughter? Different moments, uh, saying eight hours. They wanted to bring it in to four hours. Hours literally travel, don't travel four minutes. Yeah. You know, so what kind? How many meters would it be then? Hundred meters. To the hundred meters. So, so yeah. it's meters rather than miles. We're yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, literally we, we load them onto a trailer at that end of the shed on there, and they are literally just across the yard and down the yard, and, and, they're, and they're into the slaughterhouse. Right. So there's no animal transport, like transport involved at all, apart, apart from that, apart, apart from that, that, apart that from tiny that little, little journey. journey that yeah. little journey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's you know, incredible. That. A lot of our vets love our system. To them, this is the ideal way, where they're slaughtered on farm. There's no carrying them miles about in, in all weathers. It's just basically straight across the yard. And I mean, the government's policy is that uh, animals should be produced, yeah. you know, as close to the, you know, the point of where they're actually killed as possible. Yeah, That's that, exactly what you're yeah, about. That's isn't what it? we would. Everybody would like like to see, really. Uh, yeah. you know, what, what is the point in, in in loading an animal up and carting it? Miles and miles and miles just for slaughter, really. I can't, you know, I just cannot see. No, it doesn't make sense to me, but that's no, my, no, no me either. You know. We don't catch our birds until we're actually ready to slaughter them. We don't, we've, some, of, some of the FSA vets, or the, or the big wings that they've come, of, can't understand why we don't catch everything and then take it down and then leave it there nicely because it, it dies in a crate. It's far better off left in its, in its shed, where, in its environment, until I actually want it. So I said, we catch, we catch them, put 10 crates on, on that trailer and literally drive down the, the slaughterhouse door is just the other side of the gas tank down there. So right, I, okay, so, so. That is, what, 200, 250 metres maximum? Yeah. And you don't want them in them crates for any length of time when they've had the space there, do no, you? No, no, that, we, that's no, only we, going to cause As stressful. soon as we get them in, into the slaughterhouse, we hang them on. Fast as you can. We hang them on and kill them yeah. because it's no, you know, don't want to be hanging about. No. Right, well, so we're now here in the small slaughter house, and we've seen the journey that the uh, chickens take from the shed. This is all happening to us. And we just take a plane off the woods. Right, well, the handler goes to the chinook, he can't sell the handler because of the electric stutterback, the electric which the water is, is positive, the, the track is negative, and so basically that short, the chicken shot it out, and that's what actually. Uh, stung them. We just behind the way you're stung now. We that's where you have got to put both carotid arteries in the, in the neck, and then they bleed as they come down here. Now there's another bit bits on there. They bleed in in the here. Uh, well, the the blood comes out. Uh, legal minimum is a minute and a half before they go into the zip tank. It's two and a half minutes on our system. Um, so we comply with everything that we we have to do. You know what uh, the they go into that, but normally that water tank is, uh, is full, it's full to the brim, um, and that is drowned around 52, 53 degrees centigrade, um, and that gets the, the water gets into the bottom of the feathers, uh, and makes the feathers easy to remove. Then they go into this puffing machine, which has 28 discs, discs on it, like rubber fingers, and they rub, they rub, the, rub the feathers off. Right. It takes 90, 90, 95 percent of the feathers off, then we have to hand finish them off by hand. Yeah. Because yeah. although you've got some uh, mechanics happening here, yeah. it's very much like a hand finish for the Well, yeah, you, you can get them, as it will take us completely off by increasing the water temperature. Right. Well, if you increase the water temperature, then you wouldn't have to get that much. You'll get, you'll get what's called barking, which takes the top layer of the skin off, and then it, right. and then it goes around. When you get to your fridge in a few days, then it looks like it's right, yeah, 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 they go around, so it's all about getting the water temperature right and the, 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 yeah. the puppies, so it, so it takes the most of the feathers off, so you haven't got much hand finishing, but you've got, you've got to get some hand finishing to get a quality product. You know, to, to finish off and make it look yeah. great, of course, yeah. So we're now in the evisceration part, so yeah. the, the chickens have been slaughtered, and this is the part where you actually... Yeah, we'll eviscerate them. Because we have to have an FSA vet here whilst we're, whilst we're eviscerating. So we're allowed to chop up without OVs in attendance, but for any uh, eviscerating we must have a, an OV on site. Even though me and Chris are both PIAs. Uh, well, what does a PIA mean then? Well, it's a poultry inspection assistant. Right. So we've both been... We've That's both, a qualification. Yeah, we've both had to qualify to do the job really. 
normally in a, in a big plant, PIAs do all the uh, inspecting, and usually the vet normally spends all the time watching the live birds that are coming that are coming in and, and inspecting them. But because our birds are inspected by the OB on site, that we have to sign a health certificate, so provided they're slaughtered within 72 hours, we don't need the OB to actually uh, inspect the birds again live. But then we have the three cameras running at all times where the live birds are, which they can check at any any time. What they don't come while we're right? slaughtering for a, right, okay. uh, so as, a as a welfare as a welfare right, yeah. check, usually for an hour an hour each each slaughter day. Then we normally chill them overnight and then eviscerate them the day after. So that's all done by hand then? The eviscerations all done by hand. I think that's why butchers love your chickens as well, because they're yeah. eviscerated by hand. Yeah, sometimes when you get machine dressed birds, there's yeah. lots of surprises inside. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. a gut content, sometimes yeah. a crop content. I've yeah. never seen that with your birds, and that's why I'm always dead confident yeah. when I'm selling them to a customer for the roast dinner, yeah. that I know there's no surprises inside. Yeah. And you've got, you actually put a little health mark on as well, so it actually identifies well, it's yeah, your Yeah, it identifies what the, what the, what the, what the we are. Uh, the bird has come, has come from, from here, like it's for traceability really. You yeah, go back and get so back to it. The sad part about the journey to yeah. see it. Yeah, I've um, supplied it all these years. Yeah, it'll be a sad day when I, when I do finish life, but it's... Uh, I've no family, family that want to do, to do it like. I mean, they son, they son worked here for seven years after they left school, and obviously worked here all the time you were at school, but uh, he's sort of, you know what I say, Industrial electrician, and if you want to say it's a better work life balance than you, than you would have uh, farming, really. Like, and a lot of the rules and regulations are wrecked in. I think you got a bit, you got a bit fed up with it, really. Like. So, really, what you're saying is you, you haven't got succession in your business because basically some of the regulations and the hoops that you have to jump through yeah. as a small producer put people off coming into yeah, the job. I, I think it, it added to it, I'm not going to say it was the only reason, but it's bound to add, add to it. But it doesn't make it an attractive proposition for people to yeah. continue this way of actually producing chicken, yeah. does it? Yeah. Or, or it's exactly the same with us in the Red Meat, yeah. you know to me. Yeah. Small operations like this are falling by the wayside at the moment because of all the regulation. Well, the problem is that up to 10,000 birds basically in one visit a year, after the 10,000 you get up to the full blown everything everything like we've got to have a vet here and all the old that i have come now i can't fault they are really good yeah most of the time they sat playing on computer because they said there's that little to actually inspect here but the regulations state there must be a vet here all the time while we're working so we've got to have one uh, so this, this this system is not really risk based. It's not proportionate, in your opinion. It's, well, it's, just, it's just because the rules says they've got to be. In it. Yes, I'll give you an example. Right, we have we have to do a salmonella test every week for every batch of birds. That's a definite regulation, not a, not a folk standards regulation. Under for folk standards, I'm actually below the threshold for 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 doing a salmonella testing. Uh, but definitely insist that folk standards in, enforce it, enforce it. Uh, so I have to do, because I do 52 batches of birds a year, I have to do 52 salmonella tests a year. Uh, even though it states on DEFRA's website that if you've got a history of clear tests, you can go on to, on to intermittent testing, uh, which I'm quite happy to test them, but, but I do object to the fact that I have to do 52 tests a year for 70 odd thousand birds when somebody in a big way might have 70,000 birds in a shed and they test once. Just one example really of, of that there's no give and take really for the, for the, small, for the small man because the only proviso is if they find that some, some birds have the salmonella problem is that A, they must be killed as last batch of the day, why only kill one batch a day uh, and I can't export them. And being as how you are my furthest customer at uh, 18 miles, then I'm not, not exactly exporting exactly right? export either. No. So that it just gives you one, you know. And, yeah, so and really, you're drowning in bureaucracy, you've yeah. got regulation that doesn't fit the small business. There's no give and take, it's just basically once you get above that 10,000 limit, you're straight in. I mean, I mean, obviously, we don't want a, a reduction in standards, you know, to no, be no. in the industry at all. Yeah. But that's not what small producers no, like to no. sell. 
we're right. after, really what we're after is consideration that we are small businesses. Yeah. We can't cope with mounds of bureaucracy. We can't yeah. cope with the same regulations what, that apply to things. What the trouble is with the FSA system is that there are no points given for quality. And, yeah. and, and he says, and he says, all the points are given for wall finishes, floor finishes, rather than the actual finish. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, what you're trying to produce is a quality item. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, to be clear, anything that happens that affects the welfare of that chicken will affect the quality yeah, of that meat. So, the idea, it's yeah. not in your it's interest. Not, it's not in my interest at all. all. I mean, at the end of the day, these regulations at the moment are like one size fits all. I'm afraid one size fits no one for, you know, as far as regulations are concerned. No. So it's really just to conclude, it's about yeah. a, about a lack of succession, the fact yeah. that you can't get people in it and the regulations put people off doing that. The amount of bureaucracy that you have to go through, not paying enough attention to the actual finished article and looking at the, yeah. uh, the food safety on that, yeah. looking at a wall or something, yeah. you know, a bit of dirt under a table or whatever, yeah. that's more important, you yeah. know, somehow, under yeah. the present system. I'm very sad for them, wow. really sad. Yeah. And, uh, I really appreciate you taking yeah. the time today to, to show yeah. us around the business so people can get flavour of what yeah. we're talking about. Because as you know, yeah. you know, I I know colleagues at the Crab Butchers and yeah. Sustainable Food Trust have been talking to DEFRA and FSA, you yeah. know, for three years and I've been on the yeah. campaign for small advertisers, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot longer than that. Yeah. So I just thought by doing something like this you can actually see it, talk to you know, yeah. talk to the people who are actually at the fountain and involved. Yeah. And perhaps get these people to get shaved from it. Because if you yeah. don't, well, yeah. well, a lot of it, they're all going to go. It, yeah, There'll be no small animals yeah. yeah. left. There'll be more animal transport. Farmers will not have an opportunity to another route to market. Yeah. You know, it doesn't bear thinking about it, but I think we're on the cusp of that. Yeah. Um, and I know that FSA, you know, we've been talking to them and, and DEFRA. And I know we've had the problem with COVID. I know we've got the problem with the EU exit. Yeah. But in the meantime, these businesses are closing. Yeah, yeah. I try, you know, I try to run it, run it as good as I can. Um, you know, I mean, granted, now we've we've done it forty years, and I mean, some of the wall finishes now are certainly looking a bit tired. And, uh, and if I were going to carry on, I should, I would redo it. But yeah. as I say, I've got that age now, age now, when it's too late for me now, really. Uh, yeah, well, thank you, Robert, for your yeah, time today. Yeah. Much appreciated because I know you're a busy man. You're so, welcome. What time are you in this morning? Uh, four o'clock this morning. Uh, three, three o'clock some days, it depends on what time. But I, 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 no, I, I, no, I, no, no wonder you're ready to put your feet up. I work a minimum of a 70 hour week. Yeah. So it's, yeah. You know, yeah. What, it's what you're doing, too, really. Last time I had a day off was last September. So it's sort of seven days a week since. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things, isn't it? I know. Well, I say, can't, nobody can say that this is closing through a lack of effort on your part, but yeah. I'm afraid it is. Yeah. I do feel, you know, yeah. that. So yeah. it's an accumulation of things, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, is. Yeah. it is. But I'll, obviously, I'll speak to you. Yeah. I'll see you before. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks again. Yeah. <laughs>